Hey folks, this time we are doing something different. The moment I created this channel, I went full geek by creating a series of D&D videos. And now I'm pumping up the nerd with some math. Starting with Tabletop RPG Map. You RPG players out there think you are good with your numbers? Well, let me ask you this then. In D&D 5e, Great Axe does one 12-sided dice of damage with the potential of causing the maximum of 12 points of damage. Great Sword does two six-sided dice of damage and also has the potential to cause a maximum of 12 points of damage. Ignoring any ability modifiers and features, can you tell me which one is better? Well, you can find out what the answer is after the intro, because this time we are going to talk about dice probability. All right, math junkies, strap yourself on your seat and get ready to win with math because we are doing dice probability. Okay, here we have a single 12-sided die or 1d12. At the other side, we have a set of two 6-sided dice or 2d6. You can easily tell that the maximum value they can get is 12. But are they the same? Let's expand the possible combinations. With a 12-sided dice, there are only 12 numerical values you can get. With 2d6, there are only 11 because 2 is the minimum value you can get. Many of the numbers are recurring, like this column of 7 here, because there are just so many ways to get 7 with two six-sided dice. That's all good to know, but what's important here is the mean, or average. The average of d12 is 6.5, but the average of 2d6 is 7. Yes, in the long run, Great Sword does more damage than Great Axe. But let's look at this a little more closely. The standard deviation for d12 is 3.45 and for 2d6 is 2.42. This means that the value you can get by rolling d12 has greater variance. If you look at the chart, you can easily tell that you have as much chance to get any of the 12 results and you don't know what value you're going to get. Conversely, you can see that rolling 2d6 has greater probability to produce results closer to the average. So you get steadier damage output. But of course, you may have your own preference. If you prefer the chaos of not knowing what you will get, maybe the great axe is your star, to each their own. You can google the formula for mean and standard deviation, but there's a cool web app called any dice you can use to calculate dice probabilities really quickly. Click calculate, then the data summary tab, and there you go. Mean and deviation all calculated. But the cool thing is that you can also get the table and graph view. Neat eh? I have the link to the formula in the description below. You can apply this knowledge to other games. Recently, after game mastering it for so long, I finally get the opportunity to play Call of Cthulhu again. Being an ex-colonial army soldier, my character is going to be the brawn of the team. So when I asked the game master what weapon I start with, he said, medium melee weapons. He doesn't want my character to start with large knife that cause 1d8 of damage. But then I smiled. You know why? Because I get to pick the medium knife which does d4 plus 2 damage a maximum of 6 damage. That sounds bad, but why was I happy? Now let me tell you something. In Call of Cthulhu, whenever a character receives damage that's equal to or more than half the maximum hit points, that character will receive major wound and it will trigger the faint roll. If they fail to succeed their constitution roll, then they will fall unconscious. I have established with a game master or keeper as they are called in Call of Cthulhu that enemy NPCs will have to do the same. So I created my character with that in mind. So I gave him a larger build for that sweet, sweet 1d4 damage bonus. Also, knowing that the average human NPC thugs have about 12 to 14 maximum hit points, I have to aim to deal 7 hit points damage to trigger the faint roll. So let's put the two weapons calculation into any dice. Here we can see that the mean is the same, 7 points, but the medium knife have less deviation. We can get a better picture by clicking the table and at least tab. Now look at this. With large knife, I only have 56.25% chance to get 7 points and above, but a medium knife gives me 65.50% chance to deal 7 points of damage and above. My character's name is Fitzgerald Edwards. Whenever I shank an enemy into coma, he would say, How'd you feel now, you poor sot? How's getting fisted feel like? By the way, the link to the code is in the description. You know, if you're still watching, I'd like to thank you for indulging me with my weird hobbies. Math isn't exactly the language of romance, my exes would attest to that. 
Anyway, here is one last thing I want to talk about before ending the video, and that's the Fate Aspect Bonus. In Fate, when you invoke an aspect, you can choose between the flat plus 2 bonus or a reroll of your dice. Now which one is better? Let's have a look at the Fate dice, shall we? The Fate dice have 3 kinds of faces, plus, minus and blank. So you have one third chance to get one of those. You roll 4 dice, and let's see what kind of result we get in any dice. As usual, the link to the code is in the description. Go into the table view and at least tab, you can see the figures. To make rolling dice more worthwhile than just taking plus 2 bonus, we should look at the percentage of getting 3 points and above for your current result. If you are unlucky enough to get minus 4 points, which you only have 1.25% chance of getting, then it is going to be really easy to re-roll 3 points above that. We are looking at getting minus 1. We have 81.48% to get better result than plus 2. If you rolled minus 3, you have 61.75% chance to get 0. If you rolled minus 2, then you get 38.27% chance to get 1. As you can see, the payoff of re-rolling your dice gets lower and lower. If you have minus 1, that is only 18.52% chance of getting 3 points or better. Is it worth the risk? When you get minus 1, I think you should seriously consider spending the extra fate point for another plus 2 bonus if you really need to succeed that roll. Well, that's it for the show. I know some of you may be thinking, hey, we are supposed to be role playing, not role playing. Well, at my table, I let people play the game the way they want as long as they don't impact the enjoyment of other players. I even find that having different type of players around the table can even enhance the experience because they can offer something unique in terms of problem solving. Also, I don't find players optimizing and strategizing with their character to be an issue. I think that many characters do that partly because they feel insecure about the safety of their character. If they are too worried about their character dying, then they will be too distracted to roleplay well, and they won't emotionally invest in their characters either. Anyway, the change of pace has been pretty fun. I think I will do more of these. CJ, over and out.